nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. Good evening, I'm Reverend Hopkins. Welcome to the best Christmas pageant ever. We have a special presentation tonight by our little ones. So without further ado, welcome. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot one thing. <laughs> Let's open in prayer. Lord, Father God, we humbly come before you tonight just thanking you so much for the opportunity to gather in your home, Lord, in your house. We thank you for all the ones who have come out, these little ones, Lord, who have put in so much time to remember the story of our Savior. We ask, Lord, that you bless each soul here tonight, and may they receive a blessing in the true meaning of Christmas. It's in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, Ralph's the biggest, so if Ralph gets you... That doesn't make any difference. Glass isn't 
big, but she's fast, she's mean, and she bites. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stay away from all of them. Please. That's what I said. Stay away from them. Go to church. I'm glad to hear you all feel that way. Why? No arguments about the Christmas play this year. I don't want to be a shepherd again. Tell Miss Armstrong you want to be a wise man. I don't want to be in it. Everyone is in the Christmas play. How do you think I'd feel sitting out there Christmas Eve if my own children weren't in the play? How do you think your father would feel? Bob, Bob, you'd feel terrible, wouldn't you? Well, actually, I wasn't planning on going. You know how crowded it always is. They can use my seat. There's never anything different about the Christmas play. There's going to be something different this year. What? Charlie's wearing your bathrobe. You just thought that up, Grace. Why don't you be Joseph? Elmer Hopkins, he'll pay you $5 to be Joseph. He is sick and tired of being Joseph every single year just because his dad is a preacher. Nobody wants to be Joseph. Nobody wants to be in it. What are you going to be this year, Ben? I'm always in the angel choir. Well, why can't Charlie be in the angel choir? Because I can't sing. <laughs> From what I've heard in the past, that's not a serious drawback. The way an angel always seems like a closet full of mice. <laughs> what do you wear in the angel choir? Bed sheets. Oh boy, some choice. A back row or bed sheets. Come on, let's go watch TV. would run everything if she could. I mean, she directs the Christmas pageant, runs the potluck, she preaches the pastor move over and let her. Is, uh, is that George Armstrong's wife? Yes, dear. Well, maybe she'll try to manage the hospital because that's where she's at. I ran into George this morning at the hardware store. Said she broke her leg this morning. She'll be in traction for two weeks and laid up to the first of the year. The first of the year? We're going to have to cancel Christmas! She's in charge of Christmas? I mean, she runs a pop lock and she directs the Christmas pageant. Poor Helen. Oh, who do you think they're going to get to do all these things? Um, yes. I'll run the bazaar, Edna. And you'll do the potluck supper? I know. Oh, but what in the world are we going to do about the pageant? Unless. How about Grace? I just can't, Edna. I have company all Christmas week. How about Grace? <clears throat> Hello? Grace? Christmas pageant isn't exactly what you'd call four-star entertainment. Mrs. Armstrong breaking her leg was the only unexpected thing that ever happened to it. It was always the same old Christmas pageant, the same old carols, the same old Mary and Joseph, and that is what my mom was stuck with. That and Mrs. Armstrong. <coughs> Hi, Grace. I just want to tell you again how important it is to give everyone a chance. Here's what I always do. I always start with Mary and Joseph, and Mary is the most important because she is the mother of Jesus. <laughs> yes, Helen, I, I know this. Well, and then you have to find a Joseph. You know, he was God's choice to be Jesus' father. Frankly, I never spend too much time on that because it's always Elmer Hopkins that plays that, and he knows all about Mary and Joseph. I 
thought Miss Armstrong was in traction. Yeah. How could she talk on the phone if she's in traction? What do you think traction is? Like when they put you to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> no such luck. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. But I do explain about the wise men and the shepherds and how important they are. You have to tell them that there are no small parts, only small actors. Remind the angel choir not to stare at the audience. And don't let them wear earrings and things like that. Oh, and they cannot wear clunky shoes or high heels. Oh, I just hope you don't have too many baby angels, Grace, because they are going to be your biggest problem. Uh, you will leave some for the rest of us, won't you, Charlie? I'm hungry. Leave my hood and stole my lunch again. <coughs> How can you let him do that to you day after day? How can I stop him? Where's the chicken? Hey, woman, where's the chicken? It's in the oven. <laughs> I'll go get it. You'll have to get someone to push the baby angels on, or otherwise they're going to get in each other's way, and they'll bend their wings and things like that. But of course, Bob could probably do that. Oh, and he could keep an eye on the shepherds for you also. One more thing. Do not let the angel choir wear lipstick. They think because they're in a play... Helen, I have to go. There's somebody at the door. Well, they think because it's a play that they do have to wear lipstick. It looks so terrible. So tell them... Helen, I have to go. I'll talk to you later. Somebody's at the door. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Hold on. Hey, woman! Can I get some food? I haven't had anything to eat in three days. It's <laughs> just you. I was lonely at the table. Well, Helen Armstrong's lonely at the hospital. Not as long as them phones are working. <laughs> I bet you told you about no small parts, only small actors. Yeah, and getting someone to shove the baby's angels on and make the shepherd shut up. Yeah, she suggested your father. Does that mean I have to go? <laughs> Grace? Grace? Don't use just anybody's baby for Jesus. You must get a quiet one. Better yet, what I would do is get two, and that way if one of them gets fussy, you can just switch them out. <laughs> My mom didn't pay much attention to Miss Armstrong. She said Miss Armstrong was stuck in the hospital with nothing to do but think up problems. And of course, there weren't going to be any problems. Of course, my mom didn't count on the herdman being there. That was Charlie's fault. Hold up. <laughs> hey, Leroy, you give me my lunch back. Sure, it's here. You took my dessert again. How do you know? Because it isn't in there. What was it? <laughs> Two Twinkies. <laughs> you know what, Leroy? You think it's so great that you steal my dessert every day. And I don't care if you steal my dessert. I'll even give you my dessert. I get all the dessert I want in Sunday school. Oh yeah, what kind of dessert? All kinds. Chocolate cake, chocolate cakes and donuts and can candy bars and Twinkies and Big Wheels. All we want, all the time. Who gives it to you? Uh, the minister. Why is he crazy? 
No, I think he's rich. <laughs> that was the wrong thing to tell the Herdmans. And sure enough, the very next Sunday, there they were in Sunday school, just in time to hear about the Christmas pageants. <coughs> What's a pageant? It's like a play. What, like on TV, what's it about? It's about Jesus. Everything here is. You got to be a wife. 
wise man. Well, wise men are normally boys, but I guess in this case we could. I'll be a wise man. Me too. Claude. Don't you want to be a wise man? What's a wise man? Just raise your hand. Christmas pageant. I decided a long time ago, 
under the circumstances that I was given, that this was going to be the best Christmas play ever. And I'm doing it with the Herdmans. They're the only ones that volunteered. I could care less what anybody says. Good for you, Grace. The car is over there. And you're helping. What does that mean? Don't start. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Mighty Marvel in the amazing comics out of the Black Knight with horrible vengeance. This is the angel of the Lord that told the good news to the shepherds. In the Black Knight, right? Out of nowhere, right? Well, in a way. Show them! <laughs> now, when Jesus was born, there were wise men from the east bearing the gifts of gold and frankincense. What's that? And myrrh. What's that? Um, they were special things like oils and precious um, spices. Oil? What kind of gift is oil? We get better gifts from the child welfare. <laughs> were they the welfare, the wise men? Um, no, they were the kings that were sent. <coughs> it's about time somebody important showed up, because if they're kings and all, they can tell the innkeeper where to get <coughs> off. They were sent by Herod, who was, well, he's like the main king, and he wanted to find Jesus and have him put to death. They? He's a baby. He wants to kill a baby. Who's Herod? <laughs> Fix the innkeeper. Gladys, you wipe out the innkeeper. I can't. I'm the
the baby angel so we can get started. This is our last rehearsal, and we're going to... Okay, ladies, I just wanted to let you know that Lady Society's down in the basement baking applesauce cakes, and we don't want to disturb you, but... Is this your dress rehearsal? Uh, well, it's supposed to be. I have a question. Did your niece have a baby about five weeks she ago? She did. She's five weeks old. Uh, do you think we could borrow her? No. No. She is happy, beautiful, and healthy, and there's no way we are turning her over to the likes of imaging her. And I am so sorry, Grace. <sighs> Thanks anyway. <coughs> I didn't know you had a new baby, Robin David. He's not new. He's double jointed. He can probably scrunch up. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. How good is a baby? How can you do that, Imogene? There's always two or three outside of the supermarket. I'll get one. Imogene, you cannot steal somebody's baby. Just forget about a baby. You will have to use a doll. That's no well, I guess that's better anyways. The dog can't bite you. And Imogene, Mary did wear earrings. <coughs> I have to wear these. I just got my ears pierced, and if I don't, my ears will go together. They're not going to close up in an hour and a half. What did the doctor tell you? What doctor? Imogene, who pierced your ears? Gladys. <laughs> I bet she did it with an ice pick. I'll bet Imogene's ears will turn black and fall off. Okay, well, let's find something smaller. Now, is that your costume? Come on, guys, you're all supposed to be in costumes today. I can't find my halo. My wings got all bent. Janet's got my robe. The one doesn't have any white sheets. Can I wear sheets with balloons on it? I've never been in Sheffield before. You have to wear your father's bathrobe. That's what I have to do. He doesn't have a bathrobe. Well, then why does he hang around the house then? His underwear. <laughs>
never did start over, and we never did go through the whole thing. The five minutes turned into 15 minutes, and Imogene Herman spent the whole time smoking cigars in the ladies' room. Then Miss McCarthy went into the ladies' room and saw all the smoke, and she called the fire department, and they came right away. I can't make cans or tails out of anything. Some say they set fire to the kitchen. Some say they set fire to the ladies' room. I just don't know. Vera <clears throat> Wonderkin says all they do is talk about sex and underwear. <laughs> that was Alex that talked about underwear. And well, the only thing that burned up was the applesauce cake well, in the, the whole, kitchen. The whole church is in uproar. I don't know. Jesus said... Suffer the little children to come under me. But I don't think he meant the herd ones. Grace, I just don't think we should go on with it. I think we should cancel the pageant. And that was Helen Armstrong's idea, wasn't it? Well, we could blame it on the fire. That's a good excuse. And that's Edna McCarthy's idea. <laughs> Everyone seems to think it's going to be a... Uh, a disaster? Well, uh, let me tell you. This is going to be the best Grace. Christmas play this church has ever seen. Grace, I just don't think anyone will come see it. I didn't think so either, and neither did Charlie. But we were wrong. On Christmas Eve, the, the church was jammed full. Everyone came to see what the Herdmans would do. <laughs> <laughs> What do they do in that sound? But <laughs> <laughs> what in the world do you want? 
want me to do with this thing? I can't see where I'm going. Well, I thought it was going to look like a palm tree, <coughs> but now I see it doesn't. Oh dear, I don't know what we're going to do. We haven't been through the play one time. The Herdmans think it's some kind of spy story. This may be the first Christmas pageant in the history of the church where Joseph and the wise men get in a fight and Mary runs off with the baby. Where are the kids? All the kids in the world are downstairs in the basement putting on bed sheets. I meant our kids. We're here. We're here. Oh, Mom, it's just going to be horrible. They look awful down there, all fastened together with their safety pins, wearing their moldy sneakers. They look like trick-or-treats. And Mary and Joseph, I mean, they look like refugees or something. <laughs> well, that's kind of what they were, refugees in a way. I mean, they were a long way from home, didn't know anybody, didn't have a place to stay. They were probably cold, tired, hungry, and messy. I don't know about cold and hungry, but they sure are messy. Oh, dear. Do you think I should maybe... Yeah, I think you worry too much. So now, I'm going to push baby angels on stage. I'm going to hand out shepherd's fruit. When do I do all that? Follow the script. Uh, baby angels, shepherds, wise men. It doesn't seem to say in here where the fire engines come in. In the days of Caesar Augustus, a decree went out that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph went into Bethlehem with Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swollen clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Here and I'll be leading you 
a birthday baby. Oh, that's baby. a big one. As if he had colic. Oh, well, he could have had colic just like any other baby. I don't care. It looks awful and they are awful. So what? They just came a long way and now they don't have anywhere to stay. And they have a new baby to worry about. Who? Ralph and Emma Jean? No, Mary and Joseph. And in that re region, there were shepherds in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. Returned to their own country, the wise men departed another way. The shepherds also departed, praising God for all that they have seen and heard. But Mary kept all those things and pondered them in her heart.
Man, could you believe that was Emma Jean Hardman? That that performance was just amazing. I couldn't believe it. There was something so different about that. I always get weepy at the pageant. Um, it's the kids and the heralds and all that. Um, but, you know, this one was the best. And it should have been the worst. I agree. And I think, I just want to tell Grace how great it was. Well... And there was something very different this year about the feel of the play. It was very different. Um, I think it was the angel of the Lord. You know, that angel of the Lord, usually you can't hear them at all. She was really cute and she was had a lot of spunk. Yes, she did. And you know, I shouldn't have let them use Eugene to be baby Jesus. Who was the baby Jesus? It was a doll. No, it couldn't have been. I, it, it seemed real. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> it did seem real. As if it might have happened just that way. As if it might have happened just that way. We all thought the pageant was about Jesus. But that was only one little part of it. There was, it was about a whole new baby, and, um, and parents that were in a whole lot of trouble. No, no, but no money, no place to go, no doctor, nobody they knew, like my uncle from New Jersey. <laughs> because of the Herdmans, it was a whole new story. Emma Jean burping the baby, and the wise men bringing such a sensible present. After all, it's not like they could eat frankincense. And even Gladys, go see him, he's in the barn. So the shepherds didn't have to stumble all over the countryside. But I guess it wasn't like that for Emma Jean. For her, the Christmas pageant, it turned out to be all wonder and mystery. As if she had just caught on to what Christmas was really all about. When it was over, we had a party in the basement. But the Herdmans didn't stay. They didn't have any cocoa, and they didn't walk off with all the cookies. They wouldn't even take their candy canes. Well, I guess that's about it. Where are all the kids at? Everyone's gone. You do realize you still have your back rib on right. Honey, you're not going to wear that in public, are you? Why not? I wouldn't mind being mistaken for a shepherd in the play. Yes, you would. After it's over, some lady came up and hugged me because I thought was a shepherd. Did I bring this ham? Um, no. That's the Herdman's ham from their welfare basket. I told them to take it back, but Leroy says it's a present, and he don't take back presents. <laughs> wow. Leroy said that? They must really hate ham. Who the hell is Wendelkin? Uh, what about the light? Um, they're on a timer. They go off at midnight. <coughs> That's not far away. It's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas, kids. It's almost Christmas, Charlie. And it came to pass in the days of... And there were shepherds abiding. The multitude praising God.
Thank you everyone for joining us for the best Christmas pageant ever. Before we sing Heart the Herald Angels uh, Sing as a group and have some cookies and whatnot, we want to give a very special thank you to the what now? There is one lady who made all this possible, and that is Miss Paula Aldridge. Did you come up here, Miss Paula? Can we give it up? Thank you very extraordinary. And I think you should come up here. This group can be a bit difficult to control. Miss um, Paula does a fantastic job. We have a gift for you. We just want to say thank you so much. You can. We have a bush for you to take up. So enjoy that. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for. Before we can sing, the whole point of the season is that Jesus Christ came to be the savior of the whole world, Amen. to save the people that we love, to save the people that we think are unlovable, and the, and the people that we think aren't worth being saved, he came for them. We need to have that same heart and that same attitude this Christmas season. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you get on your feet? We're going to sing the first verse of Heart the Herald, Angels Sing Together.